January 24, 2017 Memorial of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop and Doctor of the Church A reading from the letter to the Hebrews Brothers and sisters, since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of them, it can never make perfect those who come to worship by the same sacrifices that they offer continually each year. Otherwise, would not the sacrifices have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers once cleansed would no longer have had any consciousness of sins? But in those sacrifices there is only a yearly remembrance of sins, for it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Hear my Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me, burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The mother of Jesus and his brothers arrived at the house. Standing outside, they sent word to Jesus and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. January 24th, the Memorial of St. Francis de Sales. The first reading comes from Hebrews 10, 1 to 10. In this passage, we again hear how that which preceded was just a foreshadowing. When Jesus came, he has brought the fullness. What preceded? The sacrifice of animals, the spilling of the blood of goats and bulls that would take away sins. Remember, the way it took away sins is contained in the theory that when we sin, we bring a little bit of death into our hearts, into our souls. And the blood of animals... Blood signifies life. It's sort of a transfusion of life that heals the hurt we cause by our sins. But these sacrifices had to be offered over and over again. They didn't bring us true forgiveness of sin. What brings us true forgiveness? The shedding of Jesus' blood and his obedience. Because his obedience to the Father is what the Father really intends. That by his love, by his obedience to the Father, he's healed a disobedience that sin signifies. The Gospel is from Mark 3, 31-35. 
Now last week we heard about how the family of Jesus came to take Jesus home because they thought he was out of his mind. Today we hear about how the mother and brothers and sisters of Jesus are outside asking for him. Now who are these brothers and sisters? Some of our Protestant brothers and sisters believe they're real brothers and sisters, but we don't believe that because the word in Aramaic for brothers and sisters is a bit ambiguous. It could imply cousins, relatives, etc. Now why would they translate that word literally into Greek? They did that often in the New Testament, where they take a phrase that means one thing in Aramaic, translate it into another language, and it loses some of its original sense. We believe that Mary only had Jesus as a child, and that truth cannot be proven from Scripture, because Scripture is a bit ambiguous. It's proven from tradition. From the earliest days of the Church, we have believed that Mary had only one child. And you don't throw away tradition which is ancient just because it doesn't quite make sense to us today. Now there is a third theory. The Orthodox believe the brothers and sisters of Jesus were children of Joseph's first wife. She died after having children. Mary was a second wife. Now they wouldn't really be half brothers and sisters because the father of those children would be Joseph where the father of Jesus is God himself. But in the village of Nazareth, the people would have considered them brothers and sisters. What does Jesus say? Jesus says, here are my mother and brothers and sisters, looking around at the people inside the room. Now in the Gospel of Luke, that softened a bit. It's whoever does the will of God is my mother and brothers and sisters. So it can include those outside the room. Here it's a little bit more inclusive. Why? Because in the Gospel of Mark, the family of Jesus and the disciples have a difficult time figuring out who Jesus is. It's only at the cross that they fully understand the message that he's been proclaiming. And this is sort of a message that Mark's given the early Christian community. Don't expect it to be easy to be a Christian. It takes time. It takes spiritual growth. And at first, you might very well get it wrong. In fact, there's a contrast between the family of Jesus and the disciples and the Pharisees. Remember yesterday we heard how the Pharisees said that Jesus is doing his work by the power of Beelzebul. That's a total rejection of Jesus. The disciples and the family of Jesus were just confused. The Pharisees reject Jesus. The family of Jesus and the disciples, they grow in faith. Even though they start out in the wrong place, they're willing to live and die for Jesus. Whereas the Pharisees, because they've totally rejected Jesus, have no part with him. And may God bless us.